This is the Astrology Show podcast with Jessica Adams. Thanks, Shane. This is your Astrology and Tarot for the week starting September 9. Happy birthday if it's your birthday this week. Any issues you have with your friends or groups will be fixed easily from June 2025. Babies born this week have four factors in Taurus. They could become rich or be big charity fundraisers. Famous birthdays include Jim Keyes, who would have been 78 on September 9, Don Powell, who is 78 on September 10, the wonderful Steve Kilby, who is 70 on September 13, Fred Sonic Smith would have been 76 on September 14, and Amy Winehouse would have been 41 on the same day. In your personal chart, if you have Virgo factors, then at last work and health go back to normal after September 11. Your tarot this week can be decoded at my website. Aries, the chariot. Taurus, the ace of pentacles. Gemini, the fool. Cancer, the eight of wands. Leo, the nine of cups. Virgo, the seven of swords. Libra, the ace of wands. Scorpio, the Nine of Pentacles, Sagittarius, Temperance, Capricorn, the Page of Cups, Aquarius, the Empress, and Pisces, the Queen of Wands. Fated connections are Aries and Sagittarius, whose careers go back on track. Aries, Pluto retrograde and Ceres retrograde is now historic as a cycle for you, With your career, unpaid work or academic career, this hasn't happened in 248 years and the cycle is pretty intense this week and here until November. Pluto brings a challenging situation with your work, unpaid work or study, which tests your strength of character and your ability to keep your willpower. You know that if you want the power, the clout, the influence, the wallop, then you have to hold yourself back. That means not saying what you want to say and not doing what you want to do, but it's only until November. You sign off then from one game of chess with your employers, colleagues, clients, staff, tutors, professors or classmates, maybe with professional rivals or peers. Pluto and Ceres are two halves of the same story. There will have to be a power sharing agreement on a handshake or a signature by December. You will sign off from this deal with yourself and others by December 7 at the very latest. Over the last 16 years, Aries, there have been times when everything seemed overpowering. Your status, your success, your rank, position and ambition and mission has been the source of huge pressure on you. Now you are almost at the end. Use this week to learn from the past as it will come back to you. You have proven to yourself how strong you are, how formidable you are, and how tough you are. You will have to call on this again, but once it's over, it really is over. And it's over in two big stages, November and then December. The actual arrangement which comes out of this has to last. It has to be workable and practical. Even now, it may be smart this week to leave emotions parked outside. Feelings may be strong, even with evidence of obsession or real fire over the next few months. Yet they will not help in nutting out a final compromise with him, her or them. Fortunately, you've been going around with this transit for such a long time, 16 long years, that you know exactly what to do. Pluto shows up as power in the space, extremely powerful individuals, companies, corporations and institutions. You have seen for yourself in recent years your own power and your own control. In fact, the idea of taking back control has been central to this. Once again, Aries, this week, you plan to do just that. Taurus. Pluto retrograding Capricorn with Ceres shows a long backtracking period with foreigners and foreign countries, the World Wide Web, academia and publishing. You did this and what you did was sometimes superhuman in terms of sheer effort, but you are now in a position to backtrack, reshape, rethink and reset. 
Taurus, this cycle began in 2008 with Pluto, so you've had about 16 years to see how power and control work with foreigners, foreign countries, foreign cultures. This has been about more than globalisation or multiculturalism. It's been up close and personal for you as well. This may have been because of academia, publishing, or most likely the people that you know on the web. It may not necessarily have involved a foreign language. Americans can seem foreign to Australians and Americans can seem foreign to the British and vice versa. However, this is panning out for you now, though. There's a two-step sign-off. The first step is November and the second one is December. In fact, from December 7, Taurus, you can wave goodbye to the most intense, demanding cycle of your life. For whatever reason, and perhaps you already know what, you can look forward to the end of continuing questions about your power in the game and your own willpower as well, your ability to empower other people or not, and so on. Pluto is atomic level. It's about people, places or situations which dominate or try to. So this is what you've had to put up with when travelling, living in another country or dealing with a different culture or nationality for years. The two-step ending in November and December needs to finish with something that you can live with long term so that you can leave things in a good place. Monumental effort has gone into other countries, other nationalities, other cultures, perhaps other religions since 2008 maybe Christian to your Hindu or Jewish to your Buddhist. Perhaps the issue for you has been language translation or cultural translation. Parking things in a good place means waving goodbye to the monumental effort or it will no longer be needed. Yet you have to sign off just this week until November in Stage 1 before the final compromise around December 7. And as you go towards Christmas, You will look back over your shoulder, not just at this year, but over many years in the past and realise that was then and this is now. Gemini, as the 10th house of success and status in your chart is lit up by Saturn and Neptune and the moon starts the week in your work, study and unpaid work zone, this week will bring important, lasting choices about necessary January changes in your career or with your other roles and goals. In January, the North Node joins Saturn and Neptune. This rolling situation in your career, unpaid work or academic career, is now very familiar to you. You have had quite a lot of practice at both dealing with restrictions and escaping from them. This can feel like having two jobs, one heavy and the other a holiday from reality. And it can also be like having one job with two sides to it. One is full of limitations, virtually like bars on the windows or big walls that you cannot climb over. But the other side has been and is absolutely different, a total escape. This also applies to academia and unpaid work. At university or college, for example, you've had the joyful abandonment of the bar, the music, the skip lessons and the interesting diversions on your own time. And then the course itself, which you cannot escape. You get the picture. However, this transit has played out for you, as you will be reminded this week, Saturn and Neptune are complicated. The best way to handle this transit is to honour the stretch of patience, the big test, the unavoidable and the inescapable by sitting it out. But you also have to honour the need for a vacation from normal. Getting this into a more organised shape this week is useful. You have likely been doing this anyway, but this is a good week to make it formal with the moon also in this chart zone to see what feels right and schedule it, roster it even. From 2025, this entire situation ends. But next year, you will also begin something quite new with your career, your education or your unpaid work. And this something new is karma from 18 or 19 years prior, as you are owed or you owe. 
It's the same with university or unpaid work. So this story about your ambition and your position and your mission doesn't just end next year, it actually changes shape. In order to get there from here, this week requires a bit of focus, particularly on any person, organisation or situation which has been very much out of focus. In fact, that's what Neptune is notorious for. It tends to distort, as if you're looking at life through a fisheye lens. You don't have to, and this week you can change the filters. Cancer. If you are part of a group, club, team, or fixed circle of friends, then you will know the idea of Independence Day very well. Independence Days, plural, come around on a regular basis, and there is another one now, very close, and it is part of a long freedom trail with these people or with groups in general in 2025. This week, Fortuna, Hygieia, Esculapia, and Uranus are all in Taurus, all in your 11th house of friends, circles, and communities. This week will change the state of play with a friendship and any group involvements or social networks. The way forward should now be clear as a result. It can be quite liberating to find your tribe on this cycle, and you may have found more than one tribe more than once since 2018. It need not even be from your culture or background. Tribalism is associated with this transit because it's about unique independent groups all overlapping. Do you have factors in Aquarius cancer? If so, this is deeply personal for you. And in fact, it is the group or groups plural that will transform your life in December, January and February. Even if you don't have factors in Aquarius or you don't know, this cycle this week suggests that the predictably unpredictable is going to unfold with your friends. Nothing is really a known factor online or in the real world. Friends and groups can be quite random, requiring you to be very fast on your feet. It also looks as if one situation that you had assumed was over or one friendship or group that you had assumed was gone comes back from the brink. That is down to the cycle of Esculapia, a 2,000-year-old symbol of resurrection and redemption. Here he is along with these other symbols in your 11th house of bands, clubs, teams, charities, unions, societies, associations and the like. All of this keeps you moving mentally and emotionally, and actually that makes you feel more alive. Life never feels quite so electrifying as it does on this cycle, which will forever change how you see your friends and your tribes as well. As the week goes on, looking back over your shoulder to life since 2018, you will realise that there is a pattern here. If any friendship or group has restricted your freedom, has kept you in a box, if you like, or kept you restricted, then it has gone. It may have just walked out of your life or you may have been proactive about making sure that it does. So one Independence Day after another, and here we find you this week with another one brewing, but the key to this transit is independence for everybody. Leo, this Pisces and Virgo cycle is when most of the financial negotiations, business correspondence or property transactions will occur. Mercury, Vesta, Apollo and the Sun, your ruler, join in Virgo, which rules your money. Mercury, the planet of paperwork and discussion, is finally about to go back to normal. Saturn and Neptune, meanwhile, are in Pisces, so that is about joint finances and shared resources like a house, a car or an apartment. Leo, you can now approach the signatures or the handshakes with the money, the house, the flat, the possessions or the business as you may be selling or buying. The Mercury retrograde malarkey ends on 11th of September and then onwards. There is usually a gear change the day before, the day of, and the day after the big Mercury retrograde turn. So allow September 10, 11, 12 to say that it's business as usual. After that, you are in a very good position to do some proper financial wrangling. 
See what happens if you step back from your finances and divide it into two halves. One half needs a practical, sensible, patient, mature, realistic, and pretty stoic approach as you wait, wait, and wait for the restrictions to be over next year. For example, paying off a mortgage. The other half wants to escape from reality, take a holiday from normality, and lose yourself in a parallel world where there is a completely different financial space a completely different property, business or charity space. An example of this might be going charity or thrift shopping on Saturday where everything is unrealistically cheap. So that's your way out maybe. You will have your own way of escaping, Leo. But rather than end up with the classic Neptune outcome of confused and confusing this week, it really is time to try and get this down on paper and figure out a strategy for yourself. What you are going through at the moment is 50% a holiday from reality and 50% dealing with the heaviest, most tightly ring-fenced set of restrictions. It ends next year. In fact, in 2025, you enter a calmer year for finance and property based on what you did for others some 18 or 19 years before. If you were generous, if you gave, then some really terrific payback is going to come your way in 2025. If you are, however, on the back foot from 18 or 19 years ago, as you go into next year, you will be required to settle up or reckon up on some level by the universe. Virgo, the corrected motion of your ruler, Mercury, which has been retrograde, now enables you to focus more clearly on your duet or your duel, your marriage or your lawsuit your de facto partnership or your enemy, your professional other half or a career rival. Saturn and Neptune in Pisces tell the story too. One part of this has been about your reputation, name, image and profile, be you Mrs, Miss, Mr or Ms, and the other part has been very much about the other side of the scales. So this may be your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, business partner, or a platonic double act. Virgo, this transit is also about legal opponents or obvious enemies. Maybe you are jealous of a professional rival who is more successful. In this case, you may have turned this person into an obvious enemy through attacks. Do you have Libra chart factors? Then this is personal for you because the same transit shows up in your personal chart as well as your solar chart. If so, if you do have Libra chart factors, then there is karma going back some 18 or 19 years with this face or quite a different person, but with remarkably similar issues. Even if you don't or you just don't know, the story for you this week is about finding a way to create equilibrium, balance, harmony and symmetry. You are two very different people. Or these are two very different sides of the same story with you and he or you and she. But if you are prepared to wait until 2025 for the end of this and accept what cannot be changed in the interim, you'll be doing really well. However, you also need a holiday from reality too, a vacation from the everyday, an escape into a parallel or alternative world. You can actually find that either with this person or with quite another. But the idea is the same, two sides or two halves of one situation. This is such an odd cycle, Virgo, with Neptune there with all his escapism and Saturn as well, tightly ring-fencing everything and everybody. So if you're veering between one or the other response to this partnership or duet, to this duel or this battle, then you can be forgiven for wanting to do that. This is slowly moving to a close, though, and this week is a good time for you to look back at what was and to figure out what 2025 is going to feel like without this situation. Libra. Pluto is now turning backwards in your family, property, household, town and country sector. With it, you once again turn to a particular relative or a question about the family circle in its widest sense. You have been here before, you are going back, and then you sign off. 
In fact, November looks like the end of an era. December brings the final deal with yourself or others as the asteroid series, now a dwarf planet with so much power behind her, suggests that you, he, she or they are going to have to agree to differ on some points and certainly share the power in others. Pluto classically brings power struggles, so this may have been for years now with anybody affecting your house or your apartment, your real estate, your concept of family, household, your hometown or your homeland. As I said, it's over in two stages, firstly in November and secondly in December. At this stage, you may not even know why. Sometimes the house, garden or apartment becomes the living embodiment of psychological control issues. So there may be some facet of renovation, repairs, plumbing and so on, which physically describes what has actually been happening with somebody at home or someone in the family circle. If something is coming off or falling apart or showing wear and tear and so on, well, have a look at the people as well, because the house or the apartment is the shell the Pluto and Ceres cycles now suggest that life is a long deal and a long game until December when you sign off and the compromise with yourself and others will happen in stages, partly because you keep going back to what was never finished or closed some months before. This week is a really good time to take stock of that. Scorpio. As you have Jupiter in Gemini on your side financially, expanding your options with the eighth house, your course of action with money or Christmas property choices ahead makes logical sense, as this suggests a new beginning from the final week of November when the sun goes into Sagittarius in your second house of finance. So you may sell your house flat or land or just sack your bad bank. Marcus in Sagittarius and Cupido in Gemini this week set it all up for you. Now, Jupiter is the greater benefic in traditional astrology. He is Jupiter Optimus Maximus in Roman history. And these key words give us great benefits, optimism and maximum. These concepts suggest that even something which was basically good about your finances, your charity, house, shares, business or apartment now becomes greater and better, a gift that goes on giving even more than you thought, a lucky connection or a lucky commitment. At the same time, if you have had problems with the bank or debt or inheritance or a company and so on, perhaps insurance or a pension, this Jupiter transit in Gemini will give you opportunities to fix that by June 2025, at the very latest. Life opens up economically, financially and materially with Jupiter and your horizons expand with far greater scope and possibility. Towards the end of the year, you will find a big choice affecting 2025 is in order and not before time. This seesaw between Sagittarius and Gemini that takes place in November and December suggests that you are more than ready to use your natural advantages or luck as the year ends and make one of those very useful decisions for the future. Peering even further into your future, eventually there is nothing short of a revolution next year as Uranus also goes into Gemini and matters of a joint financial or property nature are subject to the most radical change. Looking at the paperwork this week, if you have anything in place that is too binding, too locked down or too restrictive, but there is a way that you could get some wiggle room with that for next year, you may want to do that, Scorpio. Just because Uranus has a reputation for delivering pretty much the last thing that you ever expected. Sagittarius. Because the world of children, teenagers and young adults is so close to your heart, not to mention courtship and even pregnancy, this new Saturn and Neptune in Aries cycle in 2025 can be extremely helpful as it enables you to be so much more focused about what is going on this week. 
The North Node, Salacia and Chiron are all in Aries, all in your fifth house. So this is about your nieces and nephews, godchildren, youth charities, a teenage demographic, a Gen Z marketplace, schools and midwives, nannies, adoption agencies, IVF specialists and other child-related professionals. It's quite right that this is on your mind because you need time to think. In fact, the future is staring you in the face. These Aries transits at the moment suggest that you have done what is not supposed to happen, what should not by rights happen, and the rest. So you have made maverick attempts. Chiron in Aries may have shown up with tutors, mentors, influential people, guides or foster figures whose very existence challenges most traditionalists. Along with this, in 2024, life as it was 18 or 19 years ago has played its part karmically with courtship, the bedroom, or a younger generation, with issues about parenting or not parenting. You have seen yourself owed and repaid, or perhaps owing and repaying, spiritually. Now you are seeing the future flow on from the present, as 2025 is staring you in the face this week. Next year, you will realise that you are in a position to look quite differently at intimacy, children, teenagers or young adults, which can offer you an escape from reality, an alternative world to lose yourself in, a vacation from what is usual or normal. It will also involve for you a kind of bubble There will be necessary restrictions next year as well, but by the time you are close to 2030, that's how long this cycle runs for, you will realise why everything was part of the same journey. And that journey is being taken this week with a few more small steps. Capricorn. Uranus, the unpredictable, in Taurus, in your fifth house of courtship, says it is all about continuing with the revolution. As the fifth house also rules pregnancy and step parenting, the need for total freedom and independence can produce all sorts. Uranus makes patterns this week which remind you of how unpredictable and erratic life has been with intimacy or the world of children and teenagers for years now. This is about the bedroom, say, or the business of dating. It may be about your nieces and nephews your godchildren, or teaching younger people. It's very personal to you. This week, Fortuna, Isculapia and Hygieia join Uranus in Taurus. And what has been happening since 2018, that state of independence is right back in your life again. In fact, your state of independence this week becomes ever more obvious to you. The funny thing about this cycle is, though, you sign off from it next year. It might not feel like it. You may have just assumed that life was going to be unpredictable forever, but there is always an endpoint to these things. This week, if you step back from where you are now with a partner, a date, or perhaps a child or a Zoomer, Generation Z, you can see how autonomous you have become. What got you to this point is not what you ever expected or even asked for, Capricorn. A jolt is one way of describing what has happened to you since 2018. In fact, we could say it's been a series of jolts. At the same time, you are still chasing what can only be described as a radical departure from the old life or what other people would call normal and quite right too. You won't achieve freedom without it. The future is being planned step by step, erratically and unpredictably, but it is taking you towards the most exhilarating and very different kind of freedom for next year. It is in the way of these things that, according to your personal chart, there may be some karma as well. So, for example, if you have anything in Libra in your natal chart, you may be doing time karmically from 18 or 19 years ago, say with a lover, a partner or a child in your world. But even if you don't or you just don't know, This week is understanding that for every jolt over the last few years, and even the jolts that are happening now, every single one of them sets you free. Aquarius. 
Whatever else is going on in your birth horoscope, the transit of the sun in your solar eighth house will deliver some of the most important financial, business and property issues of the year. The sun in Virgo is here with Vesta, Mercury and Apollo in your eighth house of family money or partnership property. Marriage and mortgage is typical. You also have Saturn and Neptune in Pisces in your second house of personal finance, personal ownership or debt. Aquarius, you have been spinning your wheels for weeks with one matter. Ridiculous delays or typical Mercury retrograde cancellations or loops have impeded your progress. So you may have been selling your wares in a catalogue only to find out that it was never delivered. Or you may have been selling a flat only to find that photo ID is required and your passport has expired. It's all behind you now. Aquarius, the big news this week is that quite apart from delays, human error, and technical problems, you are in the clear, as from 11th of September, Mercury is out of the loop. From this point forward, you can either retrace your steps from July or August, or just start all over again. And it's time to get down to brass tacks. As you're quickly realising, you have fallen into a situation where one half of your financial, property, business or charity life is so heavy and so restrictive and requires so much patience that you find yourself only all too human and longing for escapism. So the other half of your life budget has been about bubble world, almost like Alice in Wonderland falling down the rabbit hole, nothing real there. It's a big escape for you. But somewhere along the way, there has to be a compromise between all the heavy restrictions of Saturn and the escapism of Neptune Figuring that out is down to numbers and you'll be able to do it this week. Pisces, the massive 2025 financial or property changes show up this week with some pre-planning or research well evident. So this is your divorce settlement, your family inheritance, your job redundancy, your tax bill or bank loan, maybe your book deal or another kind of deal. The North Nodes, Salacia and Chiron are all in Aries, all in your second house of money. The South Node, Juno, Diana and Venus are all in Libra in your eighth house of joint finance, ownership and possessions. These cycles now are about everything that you own, earn or owe, your life budget. Beyond the actual numbers, this is also about your values, what you refuse to sell your soul for, and what or whom is so precious to you that you consider this person or this situation to be priceless? There is no bargaining to be done. This week is very much about name your price for some Pisces people, but in other cases, you simply refuse to even discuss it. There is more to this situation than meets the eye, though. In 2025, your ruler Neptune will move into this same chart zone, it's your finance zone, but also your life budget. Years of escapism are ahead of you. Years of bubbles insulating you from the real world with money, a house, an apartment, and so on. This can happen for all sorts of reasons, but you will be aware of it in March and April 2025. Right now, you can use this week as a springboard to the future. Rather than box yourself in with what you assume is going to happen next year, Open the doors to something which astrology suggests is very likely. This is going to be a way out or a way through of normal for years into the future. For a short time, Pisces, there will be restrictions to ring-fenced situations next year. But these will eventually go, and as you live through the rest of the 2020s, you will realise that this week, in a small way, was the water slide that delivered you into the great big swimming pool. That pool is a metaphor for Neptune and his capacity to deliver financial or property spaces where you can float and drift and escape, immerse yourself and lose yourself. You don't know exactly why yet, but it, it is coming. And this week is a big nod to that. Thanks for listening and I'll catch up with you next week.